What's up everybody, Tendo here, and today is the last day of the Phoenix Game On Expo. Be sure to check my channel for the video from the first day of the Game On Expo where I went to the Expo and went shopping for the things that I couldn't leave without. The things I wasn't messing around with, I didn't want anyone else to buy them. Today being the last day, the way that it goes, at least how I hear it, is that people will mark stuff way down on the last day and continue to mark it down as the day goes on because they don't want to take the stuff back home with them. So I'm hoping to go today and get a bunch of deals. Here's the hoping. Check it out. But today is Sunday, so I'm hoping that I can get some free parking for this big van because the 15 bucks that it costs to park the thing in a parking garage really takes away from game buying. So wish me luck. Check it out. So I got pretty lucky because right here behind me is the parking garage that I got duped into paying 15 bucks to park for a few hours on the first day of the Phoenix Game on Expo. And today, check this out. Boom! free parking on the street there was no parking spots open the first day it was a lot busier but today's sunday which is kind of funny because sometimes on a sunday when nothing is going on downtown in phoenix downtown phoenix would be a ghost town i mean i've ridden my bike down here downtown and not seen anybody for an hour before it gets kind of weird and free parking means only one thing that's 15 more bucks to spend on video games. I'm not entirely familiar with how this usually goes at a gaming expo. Again, I've heard an infinite number of times that people are much more willing to go cheaper on items on the last day because they don't want to haul them all the way back home, which is understandable. But you know, do they actually mark stuff down on the last day? Do they put up signs that say half off? I really don't know. I think I nailed this one on the head because I was able to get here without sitting in any traffic. And it's looking like I'll be able to walk in the front door and not stand in line. I didn't get here at open, but I also don't have to wait, so right on. The security team here at the convention center were all very nice and very thorough, and they had a reason to be thorough. Kind of a weird story, but a couple years ago, a gunman actually snuck into the convention center during a Comic-Con, and he claimed to be the Punisher, and he had a bunch of guns on him, and for some reason he was targeting Jason David Frank, the original Green Power Ranger. Kind of a weird story, but that happened. And then you can see that I went straight for the bottom dollar bin. This is a bin that was marked $5 a game, but now that it's the last day, they're marked down to $2 a game. And that's exactly what we were hoping for, the bottom dollar bins. This is the first thing that I walked to, and I ended up buying a few things out of it. Not a ton, because I don't want to spend all my money on $2 games. I'm looking for those $1 games. You know what I'm talking about. These guys right here, they were selling a lot of good stuff. A lot of good Game Gear stuff, like that uh, Game Gear Superview inbox. I've never seen one inbox before. And she wasn't asking too terribly much for it, but uh, it was more than I was looking to spend. And this is the booth that had a bunch of the inbox and sealed Game Gear games on the first day that I bought several of. As well as these controllers that I've been thinking about quite a bit since the first day. But right now, I'm trying not to spend too much. I did buy a few games in that first booth just because there was a lot of people digging through them and I just didn't want to let some of those games get away. Oh, there's a couple of members of the Metal Jesus crew sneaking by there. But what I'm trying to say is that there's some of this stuff I'm not too worried about people buying out from underneath of me. So I'm going to make a real hot lap around this place and see what all is still there that I wanted from the first day and try to prioritize what I'm about to buy. There's a little more Power Rangers action there, Power Rangers VHS. I buy those anytime I can when they're real cheap, but that one didn't have a price tag on it. I wasn't going to bother asking. We're here for video games, not Power Rangers. I'm trying to sneak over here and see these Game Gear games that these people are standing in front of. Patiently waiting. No hurry here. But there was a bunch of stuff here that I wanted, and it was all really, really reasonably priced. But I would have only been able to get away with about half of what I wanted, having spent all my money. They were, you know, $5, $9, $10. Again... Totally reasonable prices, but we're here for the cheap games. That's what we're looking for. Next, I made a beeline for the guy that I bought the grab bags from on the first day. And he wasn't at this empty table here. He was at this next one that does have some stuff on it. Here's something that happened a lot on the last day. There were people that didn't show up for the third day. And instead of leaving those tables empty, they let the other vendors put some of their other stuff on the other tables. I guess both to make it not look so empty, as well as, uh, you know, just give people some extra room to separate some of their items. Which worked out, because most people use their second table to separate their cheaper stuff on. Their markdown stuff, the stuff they were ready that now it's the last day, they were ready to sell it cheaper. Which is awesome. Made it a lot less confusing. You know where to go look. Go look at the second table. Go look at the cheap stuff there. 
And uh, these guys, they had some good stuff. They had a lot of Game Gear games loose, but they didn't actually have anything that I could find that I didn't already have. I'm kind of getting to that point with the Game Gear collection. The cheapest stuff, I've already found it all. This guy had a top loader NES that he was selling, and he was selling it cheap, like 60, 70 bucks, because it didn't have all of its cables, which is a really good price for a top loader NES. I mean, it's not hard to find the cables. And then I found a Game Boy Pocket here, a yellow one. It was missing its glass cover. And, you know, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Those are pretty easy to order off eBay. It had a $15 sticker on it, and that's a really good deal. But. I wasn't quite ready to spend a whole $15 without having looked at everything that was here. So I told him I'd chew on that and come back later. And then I continue the hunt, and I'm looking at every Wii U game I can find. I'm going to buy any Wii U game I can come across that's $2 and under, which sounds like a bit of a fantasy, but it's uh, it happens. A lot of people aren't terribly interested in the Wii U, though a lot of people do predict that those are about to skyrocket because they're just there's not a ton of them. <laughs> And here is the magical, magical, magical $1 booth. This is a booth that had someone in it on the previous days. They didn't come back for the third day. I don't know if that's because people sold out or they just didn't do well enough. They weren't going to waste their time. I'm really not sure. But these guys took all of their $1 games and threw them over here on this table. And I was very happy. Look at these signs. All games, this table, $1 each. And that was all three of these tables. All three of these tables were $1 each. I did quite a bit of digging through those, but I didn't buy anything once again because most of the things that were there, there were doubles. Nothing looked to be running out quick, so I'm going to go finish my lap, and then I'll go back. This guy had a few things, but everything was a little bit out of my price range, so I'll keep moving. Next, I came around on this booth, and this is the booth where I spent most of my money on day one. There was a blue PSP here as well as some Game Gear games that I had to buy up. And I was hoping to come back around and find more of this guy's stuff marked down. And he had some stuff marked down, but nothing super bottom dollar. He did have a bunch of $1 Sega Genesis sports titles that I would have liked to have gotten and gotten those out of the way. But uh, I ended up just finding a few more things that I wanted more. He had a lot of nice console stuff. Here I came back around to the booth where everything is a dollar. And I knew that I was going to spend a bunch of money here. But I wanted to get all the other stuff out of the way. So now that I'm back, I'm really just trying to decide how do I decide what to buy. Because a lot of this stuff is stuff that I would love to have. But it's also stuff that I see a lot out in the wild for 2 or $3 that I don't like to buy unless I see it marked down at the thrift store for a dollar or so. So I, I don't know. I'm really torn on what to buy. But I'm definitely going to buy this Wii U game because it's a dollar and I don't have it. And I'll always buy a Wii U game that I don't have for a dollar or two. But the rest of this, what do I do? Do I buy a bunch of 360 stuff? Do I buy a bunch of Wii stuff, a bunch of PlayStation 2 stuff, or all of the above? And it ended up being a pretty big mix, though I probably bought the most PlayStation 2 games. And what was really funny about these tables is there's also just boxes and boxes and boxes all underneath the tables. And all those games are also a dollar or two. So I put my eyeballs on every single game that was in this booth. I probably sat there for about an hour just going through them all and kind of tallying them in my head, trying to decide what I wanted the most. And I got some good stuff. I got some stuff that I wanted to play. I'd say most of the stuff I came away from this booth, not all of it, but most of it is stuff I'll definitely play through. So that's nice. That's an added bonus. Because it would have been just as easy to come away with sports titles, which is what happens a lot when you go bottom dollar shopping. But not a lot of sports titles today. A lot of stuff that's actually playable, like that Hitman game in my hand. It was kind of awesome, too, because almost everything that I saw on these tables that I wanted, I'd open it up, the disc was in just fine condition, and the books were there. So I don't know what all this is. I don't know if it was leftover stuff at a game store. I don't know. I didn't ask. Maybe I should have. Also quite funny is if you take a look underneath this table, there were just games all on the floor too, which was kind of funny because there were actually a couple things down here on the floor I ended up buying. And I don't know if this was stuff that just spilled over when those boxes were overflowing or if someone was just trying to stash some of the stuff they wanted under here so they could come back for it. But I dug through all of it, picked all of it up, and then took what I wanted. Here's the modest stack that I came away from that booth with. Nowhere near as many as I would have liked to have bought, but I did not know what I was getting into this year. I did not know how much money I needed to bring. So next year, I'm definitely coming back with more, and I'm definitely buying more $1 games. And here's that Game Boy Pocket. I ended up buying it. I ended up scoring it for $5 less than he was asking. So pretty happy about that. 
And then here's another bottom dollar bin for controllers. Uh, but I thought this stuff was all priced a little high. Like if you saw there's a red PlayStation controller over there, I bought that same controller on the first day at the expo for a dollar, and they had like 15 on it. But these two controllers here, these are Wii fight pads. I was not going to leave without these, and luckily I was able to talk these people down a little bit too. They were more than happy to give me a few dollars off if I bought both of them. So I'm going home with those bad boys. I really am excited to get all of these Wii Fight Pads. There's not a ton of them, and I, I already have three. There's just a handful more of them to go. And here is my last $10. I'm walking around just trying to decide what to spend it on. Do I buy more $1 games, or do I go buy more controllers? Or do I just get one nice game so maybe I don't leave with just $1 games? But I can't afford things like this. This was a few hundred dollars. I've talked about this game a few times on my channel. 250 bucks. NCAA 2K3 for the GameCube. It's pretty much the hardest or one of the hardest to get games for the GameCube. So we're definitely not leaving with that today. But maybe I should spend this $10 on one nice GameCube game that I don't have. Something playable. Something not sports title. Or I could buy a few Skylanders. If you've watched any of my videos before, I'm a big Skylanders collector. But these were all a little bit high priced. They were a few bucks each. And I am quite accustomed to these days buying them by the bag full for just a couple bucks. So I'm not paying those prices. So I hung out for a little while trying to decide what to spend my money on. And they had a rock band competition. It was really cool. I've never seen that live rock band competition. Uh, there were quite a few participants. They looked like they were having a good time. They also had, you guessed it, a brawl competition. Man, this is pretty awesome to see on the big screen. Though I will say that that big screen had some weird flickering effects because of the nature of what kind of LED screen it was. And it made it really weird to look at. But I'm pretty sure those guys were just sitting on stage playing on a CRT. So it didn't impede their playing any. But that was really cool to see. I love me some brawl. Keep moving here. And here's where I came to spend my last 10 bucks. I had bought some protectors on the first day, some of these plastic protectors, and I decided to buy some more of them. The first day I bought a big Wii box protector, and today I bought a handful of Game Boy box protectors. So, not a bad choice. 10 for $10. Can't go wrong there. All right, it's time to get out of here. Let's go back out into the heat, head back home. All right, I guess I can say that was a success. I spent every dollar I took with me, and then some. And I got a bag full of video games. I couldn't even fit them all in my backpack. My backpack's full. And that was only about half of what I got. It's a pretty great day. I'm very happy to have gone to the Phoenix Game on Expo. Definitely gonna go next year. And more importantly, since I know how successful these gaming expos can be for bottom dollar game shopping, I'm definitely gonna find some more in the surrounding cities and in states that I can go to that are a few hours away. The last day of the expo was really a roller coaster because there was a lot of stuff that I was afraid was going to happen and there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to happen and all the stuff I was afraid was going to happen happened and all the stuff I wanted to happen also happened. I was afraid of some of the people I wanted to shop from not even showing up today and sure enough that happened. I really wanted to buy some more grab bags from that guy but the grab bag guy was gone and a lot of other tables were gone that I wanted to shop from but strangely enough every table that was gone today the table next to it just took it and put all their bottom dollar stuff on it. So all the tables I wanted to go shop at still had bottom dollar stuff on it. So you win some, you lose some. I ended up winning in the end. I bought what is probably going to be my biggest haul yet for my YouTube channel. So I'm not mad about it. If you didn't check out my video from day one of the Phoenix Game on Expo, definitely go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. But I said in the beginning of that video, I was really happy that it wasn't so hot. You know what, on the way here, on the way back from day one, it wasn't. It can be about 120 degrees this time of year in Phoenix. And yesterday it was right at 100, so it was pretty good. And I thought, man, I got doubly lucky because on the way here again today, it's just a nice cool 100, didn't have any problems walking to it. But I'm walking back to my car now after the last day, and whoo, it's hot. It's probably about 115. But I definitely had a great day, no complaints whatsoever. I'm excited to get back to the game room, show you guys what all I got. So meet me there. All right, guys, I'm back in the game room, and I couldn't be happier about what's setting in front of me. We're going to run through all of it. I think it's a lot for the money, especially considering that this whole stack of video games right here, a massive one, I paid a dollar each for everything there. That's pretty awesome. But let me go through the not game stuff first, and uh, then we'll go through the video games. 
The first thing that absolutely made my day was this Game Boy Pocket. It's missing its faceplate, but uh, I've replaced plenty of these before. They're very easy to get online. I'm going to order one, and I also have a whole drawer full of Game Boys that need parts. I'm ordering them all at once, and that's going to be a future video. So definitely subscribe for that if you haven't already subscribed, because that'll be a fun video when it gets here. But it says 15 bucks on it, but make no mistake, I paid $10 for it. I uh, asked the guy if he'd take 10 He said, absolutely. And then the next thing are these two controllers that I also got a great deal on. I wanted these on day one, but I just wasn't spending 20 bucks on two controllers, especially since I have a couple other from this Wii line. And uh, I, I, I didn't pay much for those either. Well under 10 bucks for those. So I offered the guy 15 for both of these. So I got them each for 750 So it's the blue Samus one and the green Link one. It's pretty awesome. Very happy about those. Can't wait to get that whole collection. The next thing is Game Boy box protectors. And I got 10 of them for $10. So here's my Game Boy games in the boxes. Look how shiny they are. Oh, I love that. And I feel much better about them being in there. It really helps them keep their shape. I love it. Uh, I also got a protector for my Nintendo Wii. Hold on a second. I've got a whole Wii collection, and this one is my more valuable one, so I got a box for it. Looks good, don't it? Nice and shiny. It really makes them shiny. If you're at all interested in these protector boxes and learning more about them, I have a whole video on my channel about them that I just posted recently, so I'll leave a link below. Go check that out. All right, let's move on to the video games, and I guess actually, technically, these first three aren't video games. They're movies that can be watched on the PSP, Into the Blue, Lords of Dogtown, and National Treasure. And I figured that if I'm gonna collect the entire PSP collection, which I plan to do, I might as well get all the UMD discs as well. Not sure if I'll ever watch them. We do do a lot of traveling, so maybe we'll watch them uh, while we're camping in our van or something. But if you watch my first day of shopping from the Phoenix Game on Expo, you'll see that I got a, a nice new PSP, which was awesome, I'm very happy about. I was also able to snag two of the cheapest PSP games I could find there. I'm not into spending a lot of money on PSP games at the moment. I'm just gonna get the cheap stuff. So I got these two for a dollar each, uh, an ATV game for the PSP, and then Shrek, Smash and Crash, the 6,000th Shrek game that I have. And the Shrek game does say $5.99 on the front, uh, but this was in a bin in front of a booth that was just marked all a dollar. So that's where I, I think I got all those at the same place, actually. A dollar each. So that's cool. And then I'm always happy to pay a dollar for PlayStation games. Uh, this is complete and it's in good condition except for the exterior of the case. It's uh, Gran Turismo 2 for the PlayStation. Double disc. Got to get a replacement case for that. Driver. Greatest hits for the PlayStation. Awesome. Formula One. A generic racing game. PlayStation 1. And then Frogger. This is actually pretty funny because the case and manual is pretty messed up, but I have an extra one. It's the disc I didn't have, so I'm just going to take this disc and put it in the other one. And then Surf Riders. And again, all these were a dollar. I basically spent my last uh, budgeted 30, 40 bucks on dollar games. And so let's go through the rest of these. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, PlayStation 2, and it's all there. I'm trying to get my hands on all those Harry Potter games. There's quite a few to go. Hitman Contracts. I have very vague memories of playing this when I was younger. Have to pop that one in soon and see if I remember any of it. A Greatest Hits edition of Gran Turismo 3. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic Four, The Silver Surfer. Rise of the Silver Surfer. I wonder if that's any good. What if the games are legendary? The movies were terrible, but what if the games were legendary? Actually, you know, those movies came out when I was a kid, so I thought they were awesome. I haven't watched them as an adult, though, so I'll have to wait to deliver judgment on that. Another Jam Pack, Volume 13. I just bought a couple Jam Packs the other day at a thrift store, so I'm going to try to get my hands on all of them. I love demo discs, and that's what this is. This one even has the mail-in card. It's nice when it has the original pack and stuff. Very nice. Eon Flux. I remember watching this movie years ago. Don't remember much about it. 
But it, what I do remember from it visually, it sounds like it would make a good video game, so I'll give that one a try. Uh, SRS Street Racing Syndicate. What, do you want to be Grand Theft Auto? Is that what? Okay. Uh, Moto GP2. Good handful of racing games today. Uh, Deca Sports Freedom, another Xbox 360 Connect game. I bought a few of these the other day as well. So it's another one of those to add to my collection. And then a double whammy here Dark Riders and Dark Riders 2. And the 2 is a limited edition, but I love shiny games. I love them. They look like awesome Pokemon cards. Well, I guess those look way more like Yu Gi Oh cards than Pokemon, but. Lulz. NBA Baller Beats. Another Connect game. All right, Borderland 2. The case is in rough shape, but the rest of it's here. I'll have to get a replacement case out of my stockpile for that. And then NBA Inside Drive 2004. I just grabbed it because it had Shaq on it. Not much, not much of a sports fan myself, but pretty big Shaq fan. Uh, and then last... And kind of least, but not entirely least, because it was a Wii U game for a dollar. <laughs> Sing Party. I am racing as fast as I can to get that complete Wii collection. So, all right, guys, that's everything that I got. And now I'm sitting here trying to decide what my favorite thing from this haul was. So while I sit here and think about it, why don't you guys leave a comment below and tell me what your favorite thing was that I got in this haul. I'm stuck between two things. These controllers and the Game Boy Pocket. This is awesome, even though it's missing its faceplate. But if you've watched much of my channel at all, you'll probably know I'm a bit of a controller freak, so you probably could have guessed I'm gonna pick these controllers. If you're at all into controllers like me, there is a video on my channel about my controller collection and the custom displays I build to display them. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already, but I'm gonna say those are my favorite for sure. Also, guys, in the comments, leave me a comment and let me know if you spotted anything in the footage that I missed and maybe I should have gotten. And also, guys, hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell notification so the next time when I post a video like this, you'll get a notification and you'll know to come hang out with me then. Until then, guys, peace out. Hey, I'm a shark with a top hat, and I think you should subscribe. Go ahead, hit the button. I'll wait. Okay, bye.